Hey everybody, welcome to another episode from Ampro Engineering. And in this episode, we are going to cover a new installment of the Buyer's Guide series. And in this case, it is going to be the Grasshopper. I'm also broadcasting this live right now on Instagram. And a number of the folks on Instagram are actually chiming in on some of my thoughts here. So, you know, it's um, this is a great car. And I have certain thoughts that I'm going to uh, discuss on here, but I think that a lot of people may have other ideas and I just wanted to open the, fo the floor up and, and, you know, see what everybody else thought here. The Grasshopper is probably one of the most iconic to me is probably one of the most mass produced. Part of the reason for that was because of the cost. This was not an expensive car when it came out. This was the bargain basement kit version of what you could buy in a, you know, in a more commercial store. So this was a complete kit that you would have to assemble, um, paint the body, put the decals on. Technically you didn't have to paint the body because the body was white. And uh, this is a box art paint scheme. However, you did have to assemble the entire chassis, but for the beginner, this is a car with friction front shocks, friction rear shocks. There's no oil fill shock assemblies to build. The transmission is incredibly simple and early cars did all come with a mechanical speed control in the early eighties and electronic speed control was incredibly expensive. This is a re-release car. The re-release is pretty much the same as the original. In fact, if you are looking at buying one of these, some of the original uh, runner cars, you know, a little bit beat up here and there can probably be had for around $80 or so. And this is again, is in 2017 money. Whereas a brand new re-release kit is incredibly inexpensive, brand new, no more than $130 or $140. And just remember that most of these kits are going to require, especially if it's a new kit, speed control. This car, for example, had the mechanical speed control with a re-release in like 2005, 2006. I think the new Grasshopper kits have modern electronic speed controls capable of life fee um, and lipo usage although they do not have lipo alarms because um i don't know tamia does things like that nevertheless these cars are ridiculously durable this one here comes with a 380 motor which is a smaller motor it is not quick but if you drop this in the capable hands of your average five-year-old this car is going to be the fastest thing in the world the ABS body is susceptible to easy scratches and uh, will quickly degrade in terms of its, you know, shininess, but they're very easy to, you know, just slap on the car, put some stickers on and drive it until it's, you know, dust and then you buy another one of these bodies. The body does not come off like most modern RC cars do. It is actually screwed in place with four screws. Okay, so one there, one there and the two in the front. If you're used to more hobby grade RC cars, this is very, very unique. Uh, very few RC cars had this kind of setup. Battery is accessed from the bottom. Now this here does have an upgraded Ampro battery door. And the reason that I've placed this on the car is because the stock battery door will fall off the minute you look at it. And with modern lithium polymer batteries, this is a very, very dangerous thing here. These cars usually come with bushings. Uh, they are a plastic bushing, and I highly recommend you do not use them at all. Even as a budget kit, get rid of the bushings and put in ball bearings. The bushings will cut the runtime on these cars by half. Uh, they are very, very high friction, and they do not perform nearly as well as the bearings. The decal sheet is beautiful and easy to apply, and there's a couple of variations of the decals now. Tamiya made a metallic green body version of this. They have a injection molded black version of this. And then of course the standard white one. The green body has the same decals, but the black one has a completely different color with the decal scheme. But thank you to a company called MCI Racing out of Canada. You can custom order these decals in any color combination that you would like. And that's really going to open up the the options for you. As an original collector, um, the re-release kits, one of the big changes are the stickers. We have stickers, this Pro Gear sticker, for example, or this Tamiya sticker on the roof. These are not the same as the original decals. This one actually should have said Weber. So these are the stock wheels and tires and your wheel and tire option really isn't that great because these cars have a five spoke proprietary hub design 
And there's a lot of cars that do use these wheels and tires, like the Midnight Pumpkin uh, has the same hubs, the Frog with the same wheel and tire combination, um, cars like the Sand Scorcher, Super Champ, but really you're not gonna find a modern wheel and tire that's gonna bolt onto this axle. You have to buy a Tamiya adapter uh, right here, this Tamiya adapter, which will allow you to basically put this on the axle and install a regular 12 millimeter hub rear rim. So you, the car will kind of lose its look. You can also install oil-filled rear shocks. Oil-filled front shocks are a completely different story. The only bolt-on front oil-filled shock was sold in the 1980s by a company called UG, and it is a complete pile of junk. This is the oil-filled shock in question here on my Hornet. And um, it is a beautiful looker. They leak like crazy. The shock shaft is brass, so it bends when you do this. And basically, they are incredibly valuable and highly desirable. So these things here will set you around $60 or $70 for used ones. Uh, and when this car doesn't uh, cost much more than that, I don't think they're a good choice. You can install some of the upgraded suspension components that I do make. But this is a grasshopper, and I've always felt that a grasshopper is best left alone. In fact, to prove that, I'm going to take this for a drive. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed that running video. You know, the car's not very quick and the suspension's terrible. And, you know, it's it's a it's a grasshopper from 1984. I mean, its terribleness is why, specifically why this car is so brilliant. It is not designed to win races. It is designed specifically to make you laugh. And that is for me the reason why I love this car. So the question on everybody's mind is: do you want one? And I think there's a couple of different people who are going to buy this car. One, it's going to be either, you know, the collector or the person that had him as a kid who loves everything about this car because, you know, of just what it is. They love the tires on it. They love the body design. They love the, the, the decals. They appreciate the simplicity of the build. They understand that this car is first and foremost a toy and not intended to be a product where you're going to win a race. And for that group of people, I think you should undoubtedly buy this car. Whether or not it's the original or the re-release is going to depend on if you are the obsessive collector or if you're just that person that, you know, had one back when they were seven years old, misses it and wants to go out and buy a new one, then go get a re-release. These are great cars. And some of the newer re-release kits are going to come with an ESC. The question of do I run an ESC or MSC is a difficult question to ask me because I will never run an MSC, ever. And again, this is cosmetic. The real one is behind it. I like how these look and I have old broken servos, so I might as well use those. 
The other person that might want this car is the, the person who I made this video for, and that's for the five, six, or seven-year-old child whose parents reach out to me and say, hey, I want to buy an RC car for my kid. What should I buy them? And I love my old Tamiya's, but I cannot recommend this car for a child unless, like me, the parent is obsessed with the older RC cars. And I have proof of this because this is my daughter's Hornet. Okay, I know this is a terrible car, uh, but it's also one of my favorite cars and it's the best car you can buy a little kid to have fun with, but just fun. These are cars designed to make you giggle and laugh. And the best analogy I can give to you is if your child walks up to you and says, I want a video game system and you buy them an Atari. Okay, the Atari you may have loved when you were a kid, but if they grow up with having friends that have PS4s and, you know, these crazy modern computer systems and Xbox Ones and all these modern video game systems, and you give them an Atari, um, I think you can see where I'm coming from. I love this car. I love the Atari, but I also know that they have limitations. These are not easy cars to upgrade. Uh, you know, I'm one of the few people that does offer upgraded parts of these cars, but you know, you can go on eBay and find all manner of people as obsessed as I am selling upgraded parts that really aren't going to make the car into a race car. If you want to buy your child an RC car and get them into the hobby, there are some great examples. The Tamiya DT-03 chassis. Um, they make a car called the Neo Fighter Buggy. It is beautiful. There's, a, there's an image of it up right now. Uh, easy to assemble and it does come in ready to run. But it's not just Tamiya. You've got companies like Traxxas that make the Stampede. Another car that is durable. It's big. It's husky. It's capable of jumping off crazy things and handling wild terrain. But my recommendation is that a car like this that is definitely more of a, a niche market toy is not going to make your run-of-the-mill eight-year-old very happy. A Traxxas Stampede, the Tamiya DT-03, a slew of other cars are going to be way better for a child who's just getting started in the hobby. They can be upgraded to amazing lengths, relatively inexpensive. They can be great for bashing around the backyard and they can be great to go to the racetrack and uh, win some races. I also completely forgot to mention, this is thanks to RC Racer 666 on Instagram, who has mentioned that, you know, vintage RCs can be frustrating. And that led me to forget and, and uh, something completely important here is parts. Now, grasshoppers are really, really sturdy. I mean, insanely sturdy. But some of the vintage RC cars on the market, you may not be able to get parts at the hobby shop. Um, you know, I mentioned the DT-03 is a great car for a beginner, but you have to make sure that the hobby shop on the corner, if you have a hobby shop on the corner, or the uh, whatever service that you buy via the internet, stocks the parts for the car that you want. Because if your child breaks something, you don't want to wait six months to get a replacement part, or worse yet, be told, I'm sorry, that vehicle's discontinued and you're screwed. So that is also something very important to look into. I love my vintage RC cars, but when I go to the track, I bring spare parts. And that is the difference between this and buying a car that is run-of-the-mill and modern. All right, folks. Well, thank you all so much for watching. I, I hope I didn't upset or offend too many of you out there who love the grasshopper. I do too, but I, I just need to be realistic out there and give people proper expectations because this can, you know, this can really hurt people or kids who want to buy somebody a nice toy. And I don't think that this is for everybody. And I just wanted that to be to be well known. If you like this video, please subscribe. This is what we'll be talking about next time. This is going to be the video on the grasshopper two. Vert, and I don't want to do a versus a grasshopper. That's not really fair because they're, even though they're basically the same car, different people are going to buy each one of these cars. But that'll be, uh, the next video will be the grasshopper 2. Then I'll do the super hornet, the rising fighter, and all manner of RC cars. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Ampro Engineering on both. And before you take off, please check out the band Blue Pinto. They allow me to use all of their songs in my video and a link to their website is in the end credits. Thank you all so much and we'll see you next time.